good evening. Thank you for joining with us tonight. I'm so thankful and privileged that I am able to be tuned in with you wherever you're watching this, whether it be in your car or even at your house. I'm also very excited that here at Fairbanks Missionary Baptist Church, we are able to do our first Wednesday night service that in such a lengthy period of time amidst the coronavirus uh, situation that we find ourselves in. And tonight I want to talk a little bit about that, but more importantly, a little bit of what the coronavirus has done to our society. And that's kind of where our Bible study is going to be at with tonight. And of course, as we talked a little bit about last Sunday in regards to our prayer life and how we ought to be drawing closer to God amidst our prayer life, I also want to consider the fact, too, that our relationships are as important as well in this time of the coronavirus. Speaking to several members of the church, they've emphasized how the socially distanced environment that we live in has impacted them, uh, even mentally, a little bit psychologically, and for our church, even spiritually, how we yearn for the worship service. And so as we consider the life as we know it in this COVID-19 society that we live in, I even consider looking ahead and seeing the reports that we get looking at this fall and winter and kind of the uh, uh, warnings perhaps or even studies considering that uh, the coronavirus may come back again. And we don't know what the future holds. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But I, undoubtedly there is an influence all around us promoting to be socially distant. We hear it from our media sources. We hear it from our national leaders, from the federal government to the state government, and even to the local governments as well, following ordinances and policies to be socially distant from everybody, keeping a six feet apart. I even chuckle at the fact that we can't even go to a Walmart uh, without going into proper entryways. And no doubt I'm thankful for the safety that this brings but it is in a very real way a pressure to be living in this socially distant environment that we live in. I even had just a recent experience just the other day where my wife and I had a package coming via the FedEx delivery. And the FedEx delivery guy was driving up our uh, road here and into the parking area where our house is at. And I come out the door to greet him. He was a nice gentleman, and we got to talking a little bit. And then he opened his back door to give me his package. And it was a rather big package of furniture that we purchased. And I noticed uh, as I was drawing closer to him, he got a little nervous. And he turned around to tell me that uh, I needed to be following the six feet rule that was emphasized. And I totally forgot about it, just trying to be a helpful person in that situation. But even there, it's telling us, it's showing us in the environment that we live in, that being socially distant is this emphasized, just being emphasized in the time that we're living in. But let us today remember that though we live in a very real, physically distant world in the time that we live in, but to us as Christians to not forget that we have a God who places importance on relationships. And I fear that as we be and becoming more socially distant, uh, one of the casualties of this environment is our relationships that we live in. As we do consider our relationships, we'll begin in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 2, to see some of the foundational points, and then we'll also look into some New Testament passages as well. But as I customarily do, let us ask the Lord to bless our time in His Word this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for today. Lord, we thank you here at Fairbanks to have a little bit of rain, to be giving rain unto the, unto the land that which we live in, and to so many farmers around our community who quite truthfully do depend on the rain and will be depending on the rain. So Lord, we thank you for your providence, Lord. Lord, we thank you for a nation that we live in to give us the right to be able to worship here, to give us the privilege, to give us the freedom to worship even as we're worshiping today amidst the Facebook live stream uh, without worry, without fear, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that. 
Lord, I pray now that as we study a little bit about relationships, that you allow the Holy Spirit to work on our hearts tonight. And if there's anybody that's listening that may not know you in a personal way, that you'd be able to emphasize that on their lives as well. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, are doing, and will continue to do. And we give you the praise for what will be done tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we look at Genesis chapter 1, we're going to see first off the importance of relationships, but really how God created you and I with relationships in mind. And that goes back to even the beginning of Adam, where we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, where God was talking about Adam. And he said, and God said, let us make man in our image after our own likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And then notice with me, you'll see the importance of this verse here in just a few moments. But in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 God's kind of looking over all the creation that he made, and, he, and it says that God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. I want you to kind of put those last four words in your memory for just the next few moments. But let us continue on to chapter 2. In chapter 2, verse 7, we read, And God, and the Lord God, formed man of the dust, of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and then read with me in verse 18 where we see kind of the verse our foundational verse of the message tonight and the lord god said it is not good that man should be alone that man should be alone and here we see kind of the detailed account of how god created us intentionally to not be alone socially. Now we know in the in the chapter here that God created Eve for man, but though if I may broaden the perspective of our mind, really what God was talking about was that it was not good for man, it was not good for Adam, it was not good for you and I to be isolated, to be by ourselves for any length of period of time. You see, Adam at first displayed really what we would call the extreme form of social distancing. Look with me in Genesis chapter 2 verse 20 where we see, And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found the help me for him. There wasn't found anybody for Adam. So for a length of time, Adam was by himself. Uh, as a man, of course, as a creation of God, by himself, naming the animals. He was by himself, and there was not another soul like him made in the same way that he was made in all of the earth. And sometimes we even tease and use the phrase, even if I was the last person on earth, I still wouldn't. And then we continue that phrase with whatever we were talking about. But I want to ask, what if we were the only person on earth? What if we were the whole, only person in the entire universe? To give us pause for just a moment, moment, Adam was that person. For just a brief moment in human history, Adam was all alone. He was with God, of course, but as a human, as you and I, that we can relate, Adam, for a brief time in history, was all, all alone. He was that extreme form of socially distancing. And you know what the Bible says about that situation? You know what God says about that situation with Adam just being alone by himself? Even when God was with him, we looked at our key verse tonight and we say, The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. And I think that's very important because we read all in Genesis chapter 1 and even in our Sunday school classes, we teach our little children, it was good. Every time a day ended, nearly every day that ended, God said, it was good. It was good. It was good. And then after he looked at everything he created, he said it was very good. But the first time he said it wasn't good was when Adam was alone. 
a stark contrast to make, that was made in everything that he made. Friends, may I add, it is not good for you to be alone for a long period of time either. You know, spouses ought to look upon one another with care. When we live in this socially distanced world, it will impact us, whether emotionally or mentally, some type of way that we may not first understand. Maybe there might be a little uh, uh, awkwardness, or somebody may get a little minor offense under kind of uh, living socially distant in a more conservative form than another. We need to be considering one another. We need to be, if we are married today, we need to be considering our spouses and how they're living in this time. Also, we need to be considering not only the spouses as Adam and Eve was, but as neighbor to neighbor. What a perfect time, even in a socially distant world, to be checking up on your neighbors, the friends that you have become bonded with, looking after for one another. Maybe there's somebody in your very vicinity, in your really near physical sphere of influence, that you could be their light this week. That they may need help with some groceries. There may be an older folk that doesn't have family, that needs help getting groceries, or needs help doing something. And living in the socially distant world, they have limitations even more so. We need to be considering neighbor to neighbor. We even need to be considering church member to church member. I know speaking to several dear folks over the last couple of days in Fairbanks Missionary Baptist Church, one of the most common themes in my conversations was how, it, uh, how this world that we live in now, how this society of socially distancing has affected everybody in their everyday life. As church members, as loving members that we, we are in Fairbanks Missionary Baptist Church, and if you are a church member in another church watching this, in your church, we have an obligation for one another. We ought to be looking with for upon each other and caring for each other, even, should I say, co-worker to co-worker. I know several Americans, millions of Americans perhaps even, have lost jobs or are on furlough or on unemployment. Maybe there's some co-workers that you know that have lost jobs. What a great time, what a great privilege today that we live in to be able to show that agape love. For as God said, even in the beginning of his word, it is not good for man to be alone. Because God created us with relationships in mind. He created Adam knowing that Adam would eventually need an Eve. He created the human race knowing that it needed a Savior one day. He created you and I knowing that we needed relationships. And not only did God create us with relationships in mind, but he died so that we may have a relationship with him even. And that brings us our second point today in the study of his word, that Christ died for our relationship with God. You see, God created us with relationships in mind, but the Son of God, the Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, died for our relationship with God. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, there almost in the very end of your Bible. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we read where the Bible says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. And here's our key passage there in, in 1 Peter 3, 18, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened. By the Spirit. Christ suffered the cross for you and I that he might bring us to God. Us being mankind, us being the human race, us being you and I at one time in our life. Christ suffered our the sins. Christ suffered the shame of the crucifixion so that you and I have the opportunity to have a relationship, a restored relationship with God. You know, if ever we doubt that God does not value relationships, that he doesn't necessarily care about the relationships we have in this life, I hope and pray that this verse is a reminder to you. Because this verse tells us that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross for you and I, of course, to give us salvation. But what that truly means and what First Peter was emphasizing uh, in this passage 
was to have a restored relationship with God. God cares about relationships so much that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for you and I today, friends. I hope that impresses upon your heart the gravity and the serious nature that God puts on relationships. And where Adam had separated the human race from an intimate relationship with our loving God by sin, Christ, the one Son of God, came down to suffer the shame, as the Bible says here, of the crucifixion, of a mock trial, of false accusations, to suffer all of that so that we could just have an opportunity to come back before God. So that we could have an opportunity to be restored to the family of God. For what opportunity would we have had if there never was a Savior to accept? When we live in this socially distant world, when we see where so many people around us are really living on the verb, on the verb of uh, being hopeless, what would that look like for you and I today if we didn't have a Savior to give us comfort? You know, there would be no such thing as a sinner's prayer that many of us know and have prayed. There wouldn't be a thing really to be known as the Bible, for the Bible exemplifies what Christ is, uh, who he is, and what he has done. There really wouldn't be a church, because how would we have church if there was not a Savior to save us and restore that relationship? Dare I say, there wouldn't even be the Christianity that we know it, and neither would we have a relationship with God that we, as New Testament saints, can experience without the death of Jesus Christ. I hope you know the importance of that statement, for what 1 Peter 3, 18 tells us is, has so much of a gravity to your life and mine today in this socially distant world that God places emphasis on relationships to the degree that he wanted to send his son to die on that cross just to restore the relationship that which you and I can enjoy today. And what if and the question has been asked before, what if there was only one person and the entirety of the human race would God still have sacrificed his son? Would God still have allowed Jesus Christ to come down on this earth to die on that cross, to suffer the, the weight of the sin, to suffer the shame, to suffer all that the world has done just for one person in the entirety of the human race? Would he have done that? And may I ask that question, what if that person was you? Maybe you're listening today and don't know for sure if you're saved. Don't know if you have that assurance tonight. Can I answer you and quite possibly say, just my opinion, that reading the Bible and understanding a little bit about the love of God, I would say God would do that, even if it was just you that would have ever accepted him. We look back and across the Bible and we see countless times where God saved the minority. You know, God saved Lot and a handful of his family amidst an entire wicked city, reaching the points of thousands. He saved a handful. God saved Noah and just seven other people amidst a worldwide flood. We're not talking about thousands. We're not talking just about hundreds of thousands. Friends, we're talking about millions of God's creations. And he done that, still knowing that eight would come to him, and he spared them, knowing that they would come. And God spared the entire nation of Israel just because of Moses' sake and his intervention prayer. Friends, today I would, I would almost assume I would be positively sure that even as what John said in 1 John 4, 8, that God is love, the highest form of love, that even if it was just you who would have ever accepted his gift of salvation, God would have done it because that's the importance of relationships to him. This is where the beautiful message of salvation comes to play. God loves you today, right now. He loves you. In the midst of what you're going through, 
in the midst of whatever sin that you may have committed today, whatever burden that's on your heart, whatever depression that you might be going through, whatever feeling that you're just not good enough, you're just not able to meet the base. God loves you today, right now. He loves you just as you are where you're at right now. God loves you today. God loves you so much that he willingly died for you just so that you could have a relationship with him today. That's the value of the relationship he desired. All he asks of you is to start that relationship with him. That's what relationships are about. you got to start it, right? you got to begin talking to one another. So talk to him. Talk to God by prayer. And ask him to forgive you of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, knowing that he died and rose again. And the Bible says you will be saved. You will have that relationship. And if you haven't done that yet, if you've never done that in your life, if you say, you know what, I think I need to do that right now, then what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause this video. We can wait. I'll keep going on. That's the beauty of this video that we have right now. You, I want you to pause this video and I want you to pray. And then do it right now. Right at this very moment and get that settled. That's more important than anything is your salvation. Is your soul being saved and starting that relationship. Now not only did Christ die for our relationship with God, but he also instructed us to show that relationship to others. Christ, God created us with relationships in mind. Christ died for the relationship we could have with God. And Christ instructed us to share our relationship unto others. If you would go with me to the final passage tonight, John chapter 13. John chapter 13 and verse 34. We read in John chapter 13 verse 34 where the Bible tells us in verse 34 and in one of the famous verses that we know, Christ is talking and he says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Wow. In the socially distant world that we live in, I think that that's a pretty stark contrast to maybe the nature, maybe the personality, maybe the feelings that we're feeling right now. That we love one another as Christ loves us. Friends, can I ask you today that even amidst the socially distant world that we live in, do you think the Christ that we love, the Jesus that we call our Savior, our friend, do you think that he would stop his whole ministry, stop loving on people because the nation tells him, hey, you need to be socially distant. I think you would be creative and find ways to love one another. I think that's a challenge for you and I today. Because love is action. Love is the foundation of every relationship. Christ showed his love unto us that he died for us. And Christian, how are you showing the love of God today? We mentioned a while ago certain people, groups, to whom we can show our love to. And are we doing that amidst the times we live in? Are we doing that? God, Godly love seeks to heal. Godly love seeks to comfort when there needs to be comfort. Godly love seeks to aid those who are needing attention. That's what agape love is. See, the Philippian church showed that and that kind of love to Paul while he was separated from them. And Christians, don't let this time of socially distance also distance your expressed love to those that need to hear from you. In conclusion, and maybe a challenge for us tonight, is this. Who needs to hear from you right now? Right after this video, right after we get done here in just a few moments. Who needs to hear from you today? Maybe there's somebody in your heart. I pray that there is. If there isn't, I want you to take a few seconds and ask God to give you somebody that needs his love shown unto them. And when you have that person, the first person that comes to mind, whether it be a co-worker or a neighbor or a family or a church member, if that person is in your mind, I want you to take that thought, I want you to take that person and hold on to him or her for just a few seconds. Because once you've got that first person that comes to mind, I want you to call them right after this video.
This is what this is what love is about. This is the importance of relationship. Communicating, showing that agape love to each other. I want you to call them right after this video, and I just want you two to talk to one another. Let them know that you love them. Ask them if they need anything. Say, hey, before we end our conversation, do you mind if I pray with you? Just pray with them. What a great thing we could be doing right now and the importance of our relationship. And, of course, let us close now in the time of prayer. Ask the Lord to bless us in, those, in our endeavors and calling. And before we end tonight's service, can I say, of course, here at Fairbanks Missionary Baptist Church and uh, other Baptist churches across America, I know typically Wednesday night services are a time of prayer request. And I would love for you to text me, church family, if you have any prayer requests that I could be praying for. I know I've contacted several of you and have already asked, but if there's anything that has come to mind, anything lately, let me know. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to pray for you. So let us now, in the moment of prayer, ask God to bless our endeavors. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for the importance of relationships tonight. Lord, we thank you for that reminder. And even though we live in a world, we live in a nation, we live in state by state telling us to have stay-at-home orders and to be socially distant, Lord, I can only imagine what that is doing to our psyche, doing to our uh, mental thoughts of being isolated from our loved ones, being isolated from our church family. And Lord, help us to show your love in a creative way in this situation that we find ourselves in. For though it may have caught us unguarded or, or uh, by surprise, we know it did not catch you by surprise at all. So Lord, we pray for your wisdom. Pray that the Holy Spirit works upon our hearts and our thoughts in the next few moments as we give a personal phone call to somebody that we need to call. And just help us, Lord, in these next few moments. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to be doing. Thank you for what you already have done. And we just give you the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God be with you, church family, and with you that are watching. Until we meet again.